Tyler from Reed Animal Hunter Guide Service. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Fishing and Hunting the North Country. We are chasing bluegills on the beds. We are on a uh, West Metro Lake, the Twin Cities area. There's a nice uh, bull bluegill there. Um, we are uh, targeting sunfish, uh, big male sunfish that are up guarding the beds or the nests. Um, caught this one here. We're going to be doing a few things today and we'll talk about them as we go along in the show. Caught this one on a jig with a soft plastic underneath the slip bobber. We'll be doing that, but we'll be also be doing some little uh, top water fishing for them with uh, the new Rapala Ultralight x ramp Pops. Uh, and we'll show those and talk more about those as we're going along. Um, the sunfish here we're going to be targeting, this is a, a flat kind of reef. We're in about six to eight feet of water here. The fish are bedding in open areas between the weeds. Um, we've fished these areas before, so we know where they're at, but you can find them with your side finder and with your sonar, and actually visually the water's clear enough. Uh, we'll also be fishing shoreline areas where they bed up against the shorelines, and that'll be more in three, four, five feet of water, but uh, the sunfish bed, a lot of the same kinds of areas bass bedded earlier and are done, and that's the firmer bottom areas where the weeds don't grow, and you just look for that distinctive kind of a, a white circle look, and that's where the sunfish fan off the silty bottom off the top and you get down to the gravelly firmer bottom underneath. And uh, once you find a spot like that with the bluegills on the beds, you can catch fish after fish after fish, which is what we're hoping to do today. So stay tuned. All right, my son Parker's got another one here. Nice blue bluegill, hit that uh, ultralight pop as well. Here you go, buddy. Might need this. Keep your hands away from those hooks. Cool way to catch them. We've all fished uh, bluegills on the beds before. Those of us have have had days where they seem more interested in coming up. <laughs> where they're more interested in coming up and hitting our bobbers sometimes than the bait under them. So now we got bobbers that have hooks on them. Uh, again, that's the Rapala uh, Ultralight Pop, it's called. It's the uh, Ultralight inch and a half long version of the X Pop or X Rap Pop. Good one, buddy. Nice bull on the bed here. Uh, the old-fashioned way, a jig and a soft plastic underneath the slip float suspended over the fish on the beds. Nice bull bluegill there. Not keeping any today. Uh, might as well talk about that. It's fine to keep some of these fish, but understand that uh, panfish, even though it might seem like they're unlimited, they're not. And during this time, we need to keep some of those big bulls on the beds to protect the nest uh, from predators so the eggs can hatch so we can continue to have our next generation. So. It's so okay to take a meal once in a while, but just resist the urge to freeze or fill and come out and get your limit in the morning and come out and get your limit again in the afternoon and do that for days in a row. Um, you can damage a uh, population of panfish, especially on a heavily fished lake like this. So uh, we're not taking any today, but uh, it, again, it'd be fine to take a fresh meal. Fresh meal of bluegills is good. Got another one. A little smaller one, but still a nice colorful male. And uh, if you were going to take some to keep these eight inchers, nine inchers are better. So throw those fish that are getting up around, especially catching in that nine ten or better. Throw those back, those bigger, older ones. I asked, did he get it out there? Oops, I missed him. Sitting on the beds, they're guarding those nests. As fast as you can get it out there, you can usually get bit. Uh, key is if you don't get bit within a few seconds, move it because then it means you're probably not over some nests. These fish, very important to understand, these fish are not cruising around hunting for food. These are male sunfish guarding the nests that eggs have been laid on, so they're going to attack whatever's over the nest, but they're not going to move around to go find stuff. There's one. So they won't come to you, you have to cast to them. Uh, if possible, stay off the beds a little ways like we are here and cast to them so you don't spook them off the beds. Yeah. Right, seven and a half, eight inch here. Uh, I'll show what I'm using here quick and then we'll show the other baits. This, I'm just using a 
16th ounce VMC Moon Eye Jig uh, underneath a fill slip float and then a little soft plastic tube. I've got a mixture of pink and chartreuse and white here. Pink's good, chartreuse is good, white is good. And uh, got that set, these uh, fish are bedding here in about eight feet of water. I got this set at about four feet because the fish will definitely feed up and come up. So uh, the other bait I'll get out and show the one that my dad and my son are using is that, uh, I showed my son with it, but that little uh, ultralight pop right there. This is a clown color. My brother's got a uh, frog color. But it, here's my son, yeah, my father's using this uh, clown color with just a little popper, looks like a little bass popper, but about an inch and a half long, and the sunfish will come up and hit them. Uh, when you find crappie shallow, they'll come up and hit these too. And I'm sure a small bass is gonna come up and hit these at some point for us during the day too. And my son got another one here on the X-Pop. We heard it slurp that thing in. Jack there, buddy. There you go. We got another one on the taking plastic under the slip pull here. This looks like a nice chunky one here. Yeah. Nice chunky male. Curly leaf foot in there. Yeah. Bulls on the beds. You can have a blast. Alright, my dad got another one on the X-Pop here. Heard it hit. Like a nice bowl there. Yeah. Oh, and he's milking. So Parker got a nice one here on that X pump. Lift him straight up out there. There you go. And there's a needle nose pliers right there if you need. That's a nice bowl there. I'm going to take a picture of you with that one, too. There you got another one here on that next pop. Come up and slip it right in off the top. I got a plenty of troubles there, but that's a nice bowl. Bowl bluegill. A little ultralight X pop from Rapala. Adds up to a lot of fun. Another one here. Ooh, nice bull, bluegill there. That's a beastie there. Big fat one. Got him on that little ultralight X pop. Got his bedding colors going. Big fat one there. All right, we got a double going here. Let's go find a camera. My dad's got one. Looks like I got a pumpkin seed here. Ooh, big fat pumpkin seed. And some meats. We got his on a jig and soft plastic under a bobber. I got this big, oh, that's a fat eight and a half inch pumpkin seed there on that X pop. He just came up and ripped that. There ain't nothing wrong with this one either. No, oh, he's milking there. He's milking. Yeah, I've had a few of them doing that. Yep. All right. One more look at that boy and let that boy go. Another one here on the X-Pop. Uh, this is kind of, ooh, I just saw one come up after my son's there. Uh, this, is the, <laughs> this is the kind of action you can have when the bluegills are on the beds, whether it's the uh, jig and soft plastic under the slip bobber or uh, these little X-Pops. Um, the, the fish, you, they're, they're guarding that nest and they will just keep coming back and hitting and hitting until you get them hooked. So. Uh, you can just have doubles and triples and fish after fish like we have been here today. It's a blast. I'd say it's a lot of fun to get a kid out, but uh, seeing this little X-Pop get sucked in or seeing a bobber go down, that brings out the kid and all of us. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Dang. Fast action, another fat, chunky, full bluegill here on that X-Pop. I'll show you how 
fat for these fish are that are well, females full of egg and males full of milk. Get him out of here, he hooked himself good. There we go. But uh, you can see the, the girth of their bellies. These are thick fish and they are strong. Hey there, we got a double. Me and my son both on those X Pops. Mine's a little smaller. Alright, my son Parker. Oh, we got a double going. My son Parker got a nice bluegill there on that X Pop, ultralight X Pop. It looks like his grandpa there. My dad's got one on a jig under a float. Get some slack out, buddy. Ooh, another good one there. That's good, buddy. Yeah. And we got a good one here, too. milking on you don't worry about it it'll wash off there you got that one you gotta get that back one. turn around the other way i'm seeing your hand that back one is okay there we go let's see i'll want you guys hold them up together there and i'll do a picture of you together too All right, got another one there on that ultralight X-Pop. We're catching them on jigs with plastic under float sand on these X-Pops. Uh, we moved, nice male bolt bluegill there. We moved, uh, what'll happen, you need to have a good area with lots of, of different beds. This flat we're on, there's three different areas with beds. And uh, when you, you notice the bite starts slowing down, you can spook them if you pressure them for a while. So then you just move on to a different one have a little kind of milk run to hop and then after a half hour an hour you could come back to the same spot that you'd burned a little bit and they got back on the beds and you can get right back to them so you can kind of just go in a circle and keep going around and coming around so that's what we're doing right now and it's paying off And my son Parker got another one. Still on that ultralight X pop. Good job, buddy. Good job. Oh, I got my line in your way there. Toss it over to the right to the side. Yeah, yeah, drop it there. It's fine. I'll get it off there. Let's hold him up there. Ooh. He's still fighting, even in the boat. Nice job, pal. Get him back, we'll get another one. All right, my dad got another nice one there. Oh, we got a double. Parker's got one on. My dad's taking one off. It's tiny little Okay, Parker had a little female. Dad's got a big bull here. No, you just gotta get a hold of it there, and then we'll get a still photo of that as well. That's a nice one to take a picture of. Good job. You get back after him there, buddy. Double. My son's got a small female there. My dad looks like he's got also a little, a little bit bigger, but still a female. There. Got a fish bedding right along the shoreline here. Good job, fellas. All right, my son Parker, another one drilled that That's little so ultralight x pop. Yeah. Oh yeah, those trebles get them good. The back and the mouth. Yeah. Um, I think there's, there's the pliers right there in front of you. This is slack line there. Take a look at them. Ooh, that's a nice bowl there. Atta boy. All right, Parker, good one, buddy. A nice dark male there. Up in his bright colors. Nice chuck. Very fat on the bottom. Here we go. A smaller one, but still nice, pretty 
for this uh, here in the uh, upper Midwest, we're looking for water temperatures around 70 degrees. Oh, Parker's got another one. Around 70 degrees, they'll usually get started. We can go ahead and film his fish coming in there. Keep docking in the background, but yeah, about 70 degrees. Uh, the bass are done spawning, and the sunfish will move right up into some of the same places where the semi-firm bottom. Good one, buddy. That's a nice, nice one. So uh, yeah, back to about 70 degrees, and uh, this will last, depending on conditions, this can last for, oh, some areas can be done as quick as a week, sometimes it can be as long as a couple of weeks, but you do have to hit that window um, where the, the big males are up on the beds, up in that, those shallower, firmer areas, and then the females, oh, oh this one, uh, the females are out, you'll see them schooled, and you'll see them splashing farther out there, out in the... Uh, over the weeds staging and then they move in, lay their eggs on the nest, and then the males fertilize the eggs on the nest and then the males guard the nest. And that's kind of how the whole procedure goes. Oh, there you go. One. So, uh, as you see, it can be fast action and you can just have a ball. Yeah, my grandson Parker, he just caught another one. This kid is hot today. All right, Parker, you just keep catching them on and on and on. What you using there, bud? Got a bobber? Yeah. Bait on a hook? What color? Pink and white. Okay. Go get another one. I will. All right, so what we're using, just a little look at what we're using today. We're using a little 16th ounce uh, jig. Um, these are VMC Moon Eye jigs. Uh, um, doesn't really matter the color. This one happens to be pink chartreuse and white, but any color is working. Uh, we're using a little soft plastic uh, inch and a half tubes. This one happens to be orange. Orange is working. Orange with a yellow tail is working. Pink with uh, white tail is working. Doesn't seem to matter. We're suspending those under a thill slip float and fishing right above the beds. And then as the wind's up and down today, when the wind lays down a little more, then we're pitching out these uh, little poppers. This is a, uh, a miniature version of the Rapala x rap pop. It's called the Ultralight pop, but uh, similar deal and then we get that popping noise and they're coming up and uh, hitting that as well just we do that when it's a little calmer we go to the slip bobber with the jig and bait under it when it's uh, a little bit when the wind comes up a little bit and both techniques are hammering the fish today so uh, get yourself a, a real simple equipment for fishing these sunnies on the bed get yourself some 16th ounce jigs uh, get yourself some slip bobbers get yourself some little inch and a half plastics um, tubes twister tails minnows it doesn't really matter and then try some of these new uh, x pops these things cast like a bullet behind it don't worry about casting them light spinning gear that you would use for panfish they cast like a bullet and uh, boy the sunfish when they get hot uh, on those beds they love to come up and pop those things so that's really all the equipment you need just have plenty of jigs plenty of the tubes eventually the sunfish will uh, rip those tubes loose and get them off or the uh, twister tails or whatever soft plastic you're using they'll get them off so just have a good supply of those some jigs a uh, small little fill slip float and then some of those x wrap pops and you will be in business My dad's got one. We 
winds back up a little bit here, so we went with the jigs and plastic under the bobber. Smaller male there, but a nice pretty one. Good job. Having a good time, Parker? <laughs> Hard not to. When Sonny's on the beds, everybody loves that. Fish after fish after fish. And these little guys fight hard. hard. We're using ultralight gear and talk about that while we're watching the guys fish here. Um, got it. Uh, we're using, uh, um, these are St. Croix Panfish Series rods. Uh, with the bobbers, we're using seven foot with a fast action. Uh, and then we we're using uh, with the X-Pops, we're using eight footers with a, a moderate fast action. And we've got Fluger uh, Tryon ultralight size bait or spinning rails on there. And then we have those spooled with four pound test Berkeley Fireline Ultra 8. Uh, again, in four pound test. Uh, that uh, um, super line combined uh, with that long rod lets us make really nice casts and allows us to take up a lot of line quickly when a bobber goes down and get a fish hooked. So pretty simple tackle, um, but if you get it dialed in just right, it'll make your day a lot more enjoyable. You'll catch a lot more fish. Well, we're going to call it a day here. Uh, we had a great morning. Actually started uh, off catching some bass early first thing uh, on a sunny day and then the first couple hours and then as the sun got up, we switched over to the panfish to catching the bluegills on the beds. Uh, hopefully you learned some good tips on where to locate those and what time of year and what water temperature uh, as well as how to use uh, a couple of different approaches. We use the uh, uh, little uh, poppers on top uh, when there was less waves and spots there was less waves and then the um, jigs with the soft plastic underneath the bobber. Thanks for joining us uh, for this episode. We hope to see you for our next one. Uh, until then, good luck, and I will see you out there somewhere.